Okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, this will be the third video lecture on accounting adjustment. Uh, but for this, it will be specified on the accounting for accounts receivable. Alright, the selling of goods and services can be categorized into cash sales and credit sales. The credit term, the one that we have studied before this, the A slash B net C, allows the debtor to pay us back within the stipulated terms, which is uh, the net C. And this exposes the business to the risk of some customers may never pay for the goods sold to them. Okay, so bad debt happens when the debtors are certain to not be able to pay back the credit sales allowed to them. Uh, amongst the reason, uh, the debtors are either dead Mati, or they went for bankruptcy uh, and sometimes they just vanish without any trace. Because of this, we cannot allow the account receivable to remain unclosed indefinitely. Therefore, we need to write off all of the account uh, as bad debt. Therefore, bad debt is an expense and thus it should be debited in the journal entries. Debit bad debt credit accounts receivable but if the company has allowance for dot for debt if the company has allowance for dot for debt uh, then if there is a bad debt happen that if there is a bad debt happening then what we do is we use up first the amount in the allowance for debt for debt uh, before we uh, charge them to bad debt accounts. Yeah, we're going, we're going to see the example after this. Yeah? There are possibilities that a few receivables may not be able to settle their debt. So what is allowance? Allowance is an estimation anggaran, that should be made as to amount that will not be collectible in the year the sales occur. Yeah, Allowance for debt for debt is not something certain yet. It's just an estimation that some of our debtors may not be able to pay us back. Okay, so the reason why we provide yeah, provide allowance for debt for debt is because we do not want to write off a whole amount of bad debt in the same financial year because it may eat up our profit. Okay, so let's say that. Uh, in the first year, I have made an allowance, peruntukan allowance, of 1,000 ringgit per year for any circumstances in which bad debt may arise. Katakanlah, kita tahu kemungkinan besar dalam masa 2 ke 3 tahun akan datang, mesti akan ada berlakunya bad debt, hutang lapuk. Okay, so in order to spread the risk of having to to set off the whole amount to dekat dalam bad debt account kita buka allowance peruntukan mana tahun pertama kita tolak 1000 dulu tahun kedua tolak 1000 lagi tahun ketiga tolak 1000 so tahun keempat berlaku bad debt 2000 setengah okey so instead of tolak dekat profit 2000 setengah sekaligus dalam tahun tersebut kita boleh tolak 2000 setengah menggunakan peruntukan yang kita dah allocate daripada tahun 1 dulu. So as of as of that particular year, we've already accumulated 3000 worth of allowances. Jadi awak tolakkan 2000 setengah daripada allowance kita. Jadi tahun yang berlakunya bad debt tu kita tak perlu charge apa-apa a -apa, uh, bad debt lah sebab kita dah gunakan peruntukan kita dah uh, buat 3 tahun yang lepas. Okay, we're going to see more example after this yeah. Therefore, allowance is provided so that the loss from bad debt can be spread over more than one year, minimizing the loss incurred at one moment of time. All right. Let's see some example here. Okay. A business started on 1st January 2017 until 31st December 2017. The amount of account receivable at the end of accounting is 20,000. It's estimated that 2% of this data will eventually go bad due to certain reason, but there is no evidence whether they are bankrupt or dead. Okay, 
So kita ada 20,000 uh, debtors ya, penghutang dalam kita punya account. Okay, tak ada orang bad debt lagi. Semua orang masih lagi boleh bayar lah. Cuma kita rasa kemungkinan besar dalam 2% tu kemungkinan tak mampu nak bayar. The 2% may, go, may, may eventually go bad ya. So apa kita buat, kita provide allowance dulu based on our estimation. We provide allowance based on our estimation. So kita anggarkan dalam 2% mesti tak mampu nak bayar hutang. But see it hasn't happened yet. We just provide the allowance. Kita provide sahaja allowance tu. Okay, so kita daratkan 2% daripada 20,000. So we provide allowance of 400 ringgit. So the double entry here will be kita debitkan bad debt 400 ringgit. Kita kreditkan allowance for the food debt 400 ringgit. Okay, so kenapa saya guna uh, account bad debt? Sebab dahulu, previously, previous uh, two or three years ago, we use the word doubtful debt, not the bad debt, ya, yeah? hutang ragu, doubtful. Tapi sekarang ni, uh, apa, standard dah berubah, jadi dia kata kita dah tak boleh lagi dah bezakan antara hutang yang betul-betul dah lapuk atau hutang yang kemungkinan besar akan lapuk. So, we just lumps lump sum it all up together jadikan mereka semua tu sebagai hutang lapuk ok, but the 400 that we provide in the bad debt account is not yet happened belum lagi berlaku, tapi kita debit je ke account bad debt sebab standard kata dah tak ada beza antara bad debt dengan dot full debt so kita masukkan semua dalam account bad debt so debit dot bad debt 400 ringgit credit bad debt 400 ringgit Okay, so nanti bad debt yang dekat bad debt ni, RM400 ni, kita transfer to profit or loss. Okay, yang ni balance carry down, kita akan masuk dalam statement of financial position. Di bawah, kita akan tolak di bawah account receivable. Nanti kita akan tengok ya, lepas ni. So, uh, let's see what happen next year. Next year, the allowance for doubtful debt is estimated to be 3% of the total debtors of 45000 kita naik ke kita punya estimation. Yeah, maybe sebab data kita semakin banyak. So, kita anggarkan kemungkinan besar orang tak mampu bayar pun mungkin lagi banyak lah. So, we increase our estimation from 2% last year to 3% this year. Where where there is still no evidence that any debtors are being unable to pay their obligation. Tak ada lagi evidence yang mengatakan ada bad debt. Tapi kita provide juga 3% tu. So, 3% times 45,000 sama dengan 1350. Okay. So, previously I have brought down, carried down the 400 ringgit from last year. So, for 2018, kita akan buka lah ada opening balance 400 ringgit yang kita bawa daripada 2017 hari tu. Ya, yeah? ingat tak ni? Okay. And then, uh, 1350 ni akan menjadi nilai allowance yang terbaru. It becomes 1350. Uh, nilai balance carried down. So, we can see that we have increased our allowance from 400 to 1350. So, the increment of 950, kita debit ke account back debt. 950, kreditkan account allowance for the food debt. Okay. Alright. Next one. In 2019 pula, okay, we provide another 3% of allowances in our dot food debts of the total debtors of 50,000. Okay, however, in 2019, it was identified that debtors Abu has been declared bankrupt and therefore his debt of 600 ringgit need to be written off. Okay, need to be written off. So, kalau tadi saya kata, slide yang pertama dulu saya kata, kalau ada bad debt, kita debit bad debt, credit account receivable, Enam ratus ringgit. Remember, the first slide tu. Saya so debit, bad debt, credit account receivable. Okay, tetapi itu sekiranya tidak ada allowance. If I don't provide any allowances, kan? Jadi tahun yang berlakunya bad abu ni, kita kena write off the whole amount of six hundred dalam kita punya profit or loss. Okay. Tapi since kita ada allowance, ya, sekarang kita dah ada allowance 1350 yang kita dah kumpulkan daripada tahun 2017 ke 2018. 
ke 2019. So now I have a, a opening balance of allowances of 1350. Jadi instead of pergi debit ke bad debt, saya boleh debitkan allowance for that for that credit account receivable. Maknanya saya tak kacau saya tak kacau account bad debt dan tolak bawah profit tu. Instead saya akan gunakan peruntukan yang telah saya buka sejak tahun 2017 hari tu. Okay, and then we have uh, estimated that the allowance for debt for 2019 is uh, 1482. We cannot take the whole 50,000 sebab abu kan dah bankrupt. Jadi hutang penghutang kita cumulah tinggal 49,400. Kalau kadang dengan 3%, 1482, it becomes balance carry down. Jadi imbang ke akaun kita, jadi increment in our bad debt is only 732. Okay, so ini pergi ke akaun bad debt 732. Okay, yang abu tu dah tutup. Eh? Kita dah, bila kita dah tutup, sebab kan dia dah bagi 600 kan. So bila kita kreditkan uh, allowance for debt for debt, uh, Sorry, debit ke allowance for debt, debt credit ke account debtors, kita dah tutup account tu menjadi 600. Alright. Okay, now we proceed to 2020 pula. So, due to the encouraging trend of debtor paying their debts on time, the allowance for debt for debt is now to be estimated at only 1% of the total debtors of 65,000. Yeah, because we are being very optimist of the current situation. So, bapa kita nak provide banyak-banyak allowance kan? So, if everybody is paying off their debts and the economy is good and everything, so we only provide allowance at around 1% saja. Okay? So, 1% times 65,000 is 650 ringgit. So, sebelum ni kita ada baki 1482 kan daripada 2019. Jadi, awak lihat bahawa 650 adalah baki baru kita. Jadi, awak dapati bahawa bad debt kita dah jadi debit allowance, dia jadi credit bad debt. Okay, now, now bad debt is no longer an expense account. Bukan lagi expense account sebab dia dah berbaki credit. Dia dah jadi macam revenue dah sekarang. Because it's, uh, it's, uh, bila kita pergi ke profit or loss statement, kita berbaki cre credit. Okay, apa yang berlaku sekarang ni because we have we are very optimistic with the current situation saya nak pulangkan sedikit balik yang duit yang sedang masuk dalam peruntukan tu saya nak pulangkan balik ke dalam syarikat so instead of of maintaining 1482 of our allowances now we only want to maintain 650 kita nak kurangkan peruntukan kita jadi kita pulangkan 832 ni ke dalam profit kita balik So, nanti dalam awak punya profit statement or profit or loss, kalau bad debt berbaki kredit macam ni, letak di bawah revenue, tulis dia decrease in bad debt. Decrease in bad debt. Okay, sebab bad debt, uh, allowance for debt kita dah berkurang, kita pulangkan balik duit peruntukan tu ke dalam syarikat. It, ha it can happen like this, ya. Yeah? Okay, now we continue off. Let's say in 2021, allowance for debt for debt is estimated to be at 2% of a total debtors 60,000. Debtors Abu, who has previously been written off as bad debt, now has returned to pay back the debt that he owed. Sekarang ni Abu ni, kan kita kita uh, dua tahun lepas kita dah tutup account dia kan? Di mana kita dah debitkan allowance for debt for debt, kita kreditkan account Abu tu RM600. So sekarang Abu akan dia dah insaf katnya ataupun dia dapat duit pada duit terpijak daripada mana-mana kan dia nak pulangkan balik duit yang dia tak mampu nak bayar tempoh hari uh, te uh, last two years tu. So we call this as bad debt recovered. Okay, hutang lapuk terpulih. You already recovered back the amount that we have already written off. So bad debt recovered ialah account revenue. Bad debt recover adalah account revenue. So, bila dia account revenue, dia mesti berbaki kredit. So, kredit kan bad debt recover. Sebab awak terima cash kan? Debit kan account cash. Debit kan account cash. Alright. 
Okay, and then we also have provided allowance for the food debt of 2% of 60,000. Uh, jadi 1,200, ya, yeah, sambung ya. Yeah. Jadi kita ada balance brought down, 150 dinaik balik ke 1,200. So, bad debt kita 550, debit bad debt, credit kan, allowance for the full debt. Okay, so this is the summary of the journal entries that we have uh, discussed in the earlier slides. Okay, first of all, we talk about what happens if the balance in the allowance for the debt increase, meaning that uh, from balance brought down to balance carried down, the number has increased. So we debit bad debt because expense has increased, we credit allowance for the food debt. Okay, the allowance for debt for debt reduces debtors in the statements of financial position. Therefore, it has credit balance. Uh, they match um, accumulated depreciation. Uh, what happens if the balance in the allowance for debt for debt decrease? Okay, therefore, we debit allowance for debt for debt because uh, it has been decreased. And then we credit uh, bad debt, uh, which later on you're going to put in the statement of financial position. Under the revenue, you put the decrease in bad debt because revenue has increased. Bila kita pulangkan balik barang duit tu ke dalam syarikat. And if there is evidence of bad debt but no allowance for debt for debt, eh, maksudnya ada ada debt abu tu mati, tetapi debt debt abu tu bankrupt, tetapi kita tak provide pun sebarang allowance for debt for debt tahun-tahun sebelumnya. Jadi kita debit bad debt, okay, kita kreditkan account receivable. Yeah, the whole amount. Okay, uh, if there's evidence about that, and we have provided the allowance for that for that, so kita akan gunakan duit dalam allowance for that for that tu untuk bayar for our uh, reduction, for our closing closing of the account receivable. So what they be allowance for that for that, credit card account receivable. And if the debtors who has been previously been written off pays back the debt. This is a bad debt recovered, which is a revenue. So, credit can be debt recovered. Awak debit kan? Uh, cash ataupun bank. Okay, so that's the end of accounting for account receivable. So, next video, we're going to proceed on how to do adjustment in your trial balance and then prepare the statements of financial position. Thank you.